Yo, Frank, what is going yeah. on? Happy National <laughs> Rubber Ducky Day. Rubber Ducky, wow. That's yeah, nice, Rubber man. Ducky. You know what? I guess I guess it's um respect to maybe Bird and Ernie from Sesame Street. Oh, is yeah, that what it is. All oh, right, right. He's a big bird. He, he's oh yes, was Big Bird. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I think of Rubber Duckies, I always think of Sesame Street and Bert and Ernie. Oh man, yeah. I haven't I haven't thought about that for a while. Yeah, just give me a second, <laughs> sorry. I haven't thought about that for a while. Rubber Ducky. Um, you know, I'm in uh, Montreal, Canada, and uh, yeah, just give me a second while I adjust everything. Um, and uh, we have potholes. We have massive potholes uh -huh. because of uh, the infrastructure. So every um, every every spring, there's a, a pothole day. So they measure the potholes by how many rubber duckies they are able to put in it. <laughs> Oh, so, the more rubber duckies you get, you know, the you get the, you know, yeah, that's how it goes here. Yeah. Perfect story to go with rubber ducky day. Rubber Perfect ducky story. Man. Good job with that one. Thanks, man. Oh, man. Yeah. That was going to happen. Yeah, have man. Day. I I'm can't just wait to turn the volume a little bit more. Give me a second. Sorry about that. Ah, no problem at all. Yeah. Technical 2024, issues. this is the way of the world now. We're moving to virtual everything. Yeah. Whenever my kids call me, my wife and I crack jokes about it because whenever the kids call us, we yeah. always laugh because we're always thinking, why do they have to FaceTime every time they call? I why know. Is it always a virtual call. Why can't you just wow. call normally? Right. Well, they don't know what normal is anymore, man. No. This is no. their normal. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's uh, what it is. This is their normal. This is their people? normal. This is their, yeah, this is their normal. And uh, and uh, who knows where it's going to go from this point. I mean, uh, the, you know, uh, you know, this was to be think of the future, you know, being able to talk to people over the video phone. You know, it was like Star Trek yep. stuff back in the day. Yep. And here we are. I don't have to tell my side of anything because I'm too busy showing gratitude. Well, Frank, yeah. a thousand thank yous for joining me today on Saturday. Welcome to Mindset Over Bullshit. And this is the podcast where I'm exploring ways for people who are wheelchair users, for those of us dealing with chronic illness, just to do that. Put your mindset over bullshit. Stop tripping about how the loneliness, stop worrying about who will come to see you. Stop thinking about how bad the pain was last night and just focus on something that's going good today. It might be that right now I'm celebrating because I have a glass of champagne already early in the morning. Oh, my wife already put it up for me. Yeah, I'm starting up early in the morning with some champagne. So little stuff like that can put your mindset over the bullshit, make you stop All thinking right. about the pressure sores for a little while. And that's why I got this podcast going. So a thousand thank yous for rocking with me on it today, Frank. Oh, thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. I I think we met, you know, through Instagram and uh, and then you give me that invite. I've been following you for quite a few months by now. And uh, I just love how, how your mindset could be totally different from one person to another. I mean, uh, as you know, uh, a lot of people have uh, gloom in their faces. Uh, I'm wearing it's in French because I'm in French Canada. But uh, right now, what's written on my shirt is uh, the MS Walk. Um, right. The MS Walk, we have that every year. Every year. I'm sure you have the MS Walk. They run your AR YouTube where they raise money every mm -hmm. year. Um, and I'm grateful for the... Uh, we have this group that we have every Monday where we meet and play games and we eat cookies. And uh, unfortunately, there's no gambling involved, you know. Uh, I've, I've been trying to push that. But... Uh, Unfortunately, you know, they know that I'm going to win all their money. <laughs> <laughs> is the group for people that have MS or the people that have wheelchair users? Uh, yeah, MS in general, it's MS. Uh, we have uh, here up in Canada, believe it or not, we have per capita, we have the highest cases of people with MS in the world. Really? Uh, yeah, because I think a lot of it has to do with vitamin D. So we we tend to have more people in the group. You know, we have about 
20, 30 people in the group. So uh, uh -huh. we've been uh, in, in our area, in, uh, in our section of the city. So uh, it's really good because, man, I'm just lucky to be here where I am, where I am at, because every other chapter in every other part of the city, they seem to, they're, they're not organized, man. I, I don't know what's going on. I, uh, I don't want to toot our horn, but it seems like we're better organized than our chapter of the city. Uh, we're able to raise money. Uh, we have connections with the radio show, local radio show. Uh, I, I don't want to, I don't know what's going on. I, I think it just seems like we're more organized here. And I'm grateful for that because we're able to raise money. We can have cookies. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm a fan of desserts lately, brother. I, uh, <laughs> I lost one thing, but I, I gained some two cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Just had two cookies of champagne for breakfast. Oh, so I, <laughs> I fully support you on that one. <laughs> you know, I just love that stuff, you know. And uh, so, yeah, we're meeting up, you know, and uh, you know, and then we do activities. You know, we uh, like we're having the bingo festival next week. So we're raising money for that. And uh, it goes to uh, activities, you know. So that's a good thing, you know. Uh, keep your mind off stuff, you know. I know what you mean, you know. It's so easy to get into that mindset, you know, uh, yep. especially your surroundings around you. I mean, you know, some surroundings are better than others. I mean, it seems like your hedges are, are, are pretty nice. You know, uh, you, you, <laughs> you, you take care of them. Good for you, you know, and, uh, some hedges are different, you know, but it, it's not the hedges and it's, it's what's it's in here. That's counts. I think the more I, I yeah. get older, the more I live with this disease. I, how long have you been living with this disease for? So I was diagnosed in October. I was diagnosed October 10th, 2016. So this is my eighth year with it. And Damn. when I got diagnosed, and I got diagnosed that, that, that October, I got diagnosed. I had 16 lesions on the brain and wow. I had three or four on the spine. So I was, I, I had, I had the MS walk, the bad walk and everything. I had the, I had the bad walk. Yeah. yeah. Six months later, my lesions on the, on the spine went from three to 12 and the ones in the brain went from 16 to, she said she stopped counting at 55. So at that point I just said, well, there's no point taking all this doggone medication and shit like that. Like, that, I, like, why am I doing all this then? If it's making the lesions increase, if it's making everything, I don't want to keep taking it. So I went about six, seven years without healthcare. All I was doing was cannabis, eating right, um, I tried right. to control my diet. The sugar we talked about earlier, I tried to do less cookies and stuff like that early in yeah. the morning. I did all yeah. that stuff like that for a while. And then I got health care last year. So I slowed down with all the wellness stuff and all the other type of stuff and just started taking the different pills and everything. And man, Frank, I am not happy about the results. A year later, I am not happy at all about the results. I wish I, I really felt like I was, and I know, Common sense tells me that you just can't think to yourself, well, taking the medicines made you worse. It could be all, all yeah. types of stuff. So common sense tells you that. Yeah. And then plus that it's been time. So I, I stopped with the wellness in 2022. Stopped because I got the job in 2022. And um, I am now starting up 2024. I've told my wife, like, I want to get back into that. I want to stop worrying so much and taking so many pills and everything else and all the appointments and wow. i want to go back to doing the stuff for, for myself so how old you, so how old were you when you got diagnosed again my i was die i got i was like 37 38 when i got okay. diagnosed so now i'm okay. 45 okay right okay yeah because i heard you're in your 20s like am i hearing this right i'm like no way no, no okay so you, <laughs> you have no magic potion for that no, okay right nope. uh, and i have yeah. um, and i got three three aunts who've had multiple sclerosis i have Two cousins. I have a cousin that has multiple sclerosis, and I met her uh -huh. on Facebook. And what what area are are you in? In New York area? I am not. I started out. I was born in East Arkansas, and oh, then yeah. my family moved to Texas as soon as they could. <laughs> oh, good Arkansas. For you. My parents left Arkansas as soon uh -huh. as possible. Oh, so you're in Texas area. Good for you. Yep. Yep. Now hey. I'm in. Uh, now I'm just north of Houston, Texas. Oh yeah. I've been there a few times. I uh, I used to travel with my work, and we've been to Houston. I've been to Austin a few times. Um, 
I, it's 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 always bigger in Texas, you know that. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they say. That is what they say. Oh, do you still wow. travel? Do you, are you in a wheelchair now? Yeah, yeah, man, I am. Yeah. How I'm, has uh, that impacted your travel? Do you still, oh, do you still it travel? Has, it has. I uh, I've been in the wheelchair for like maybe a couple of years since COVID. I guess I don't know if COVID COVID accelerated it. Look at you, you too, eh? Get the wheelchair in 2020, right before wow. right before COVID closed down the schools. My mother bought me a wheelchair, and I've been in that wheelchair ever since. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it's good for you that, you know, you, you found ways to, uh, you know, get your mind off bullshit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. You know, it was a hard pill to swallow, man. I mean, uh you know, because I've been an, I would say I've been athletic all my life, you know, and, and uh, you know, it, you know, and I still go to the gym. I believe it or not, I'm supposed to go to the gym good. today. Um, yeah, it's good a weird store, but I, I go and it's it's nice to go to the gym. I mean, everybody has a story. You know, you'd be surprised, you know, as you know, people love coming up to you and sharing their story, you know, because they they know you you're somewhat more sympathetic now because you're in a wheelchair and. You can handle their stories, and most of the time it's true, you know. And uh, so I, I like going to the gym. And but besides that, that like I said, I, I got in the wheelchair not a couple of years ago, and uh, I'm not working. So besides that, I'm just doing some volunteering, and I used to do a, a lot of videos. I, I worked in the TV video business before I got got diagnosed. Nice. So uh, you know, I enjoy that medium, you know, video editing and. But, you know, since I've been in the wheelchair, I, anything that kind of keeps me in the chair longer than I want to, uh, you know, I, I kind of, I can't, it, it, my my attention span has been somewhat limited. I don't know how, about your attention span, how long you could concentrate on something. Has that changed over the years? Winners are not people who never fail, but people who never quit. Yeah. I'm talking to you, wheelchair user. I'm proud of you because you never quit no matter how many times you fall. I'm proud of you because you never quit no matter how many times you're left inside to watch those outside. I'm proud of you no matter how many times you quit when that job doesn't call you back. I'm proud of you. You are a winner. It has it. It did. It was beginning to change, and then once I started that gratitude journal, and I began right. every single day going through the point of I'm stopping what I'm doing, and I'm like today was, today is 1,222 consecutive days I have posted my gratitude journal online, and once I began doing stuff like that, getting those routines into place, I feel like my cognitive issues have gotten a whole lot better. Before, when I was always uh. worried about stuff and overthinking everything and wondering who was going to leave me and acting right, so right. sad about, well, not acting. It made sense that I was sad right. about what was going, what I was going through. It made perfect sense. All, all that was cool. It wasn't cool. Right. But once yeah. I started gratitude journal and stopped thinking all those negative thoughts so much, a lot of my cognitive issues got a whole lot better. It's like some of the things I didn't think was going to happen. I didn't start a gratitude journal to help with my cognitive issues. It's just, it's kind of sort of, it's like been a side effect of it. Wow, that's good news to hear. I uh, so th there are things that you 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 practice in the morning, uh, to get you primed up. I guess you keep the journal one of the first things you do in the morning, or do you have reserved time in the day when you do that. So what I do is, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, Frank. I do the gratitude journal so much throughout the day. I might wow. take my like my kids might come in and. I'm thirsty. So like my fifth grader may come in and say, hey, daddy, you want some water? I'll make you some water because I, I, I struggle reaching like some of the things because I'm I'm all the way wheelchair bound. So I can't yeah. stand, walk, crawl. I literally cannot even crawl on the floor because I have I have almost no control of my lower body. So she might make me some water. I might take my phone out right then and put in there. She made me some water. I might put in there, um, Wisdom made me some water because her name is Wisdom. Wisdom made me some water. My wife might, my wife will will cook breakfast or cook lunches or something, make me a sandwich. I'm, I might take a, I might take a little piece of paper and write on there, 
wife watching TV with me. That's QT. And then by the end of the day or the next morning, I have notes in my phone. I have notes on paper. I have notes. I may have scribbled something on my hand itself, like like put something like I like one of my kids watch watch TV with me. So whenever I start off the day, I have so many notes and different things written down from what has happened good the day before that I just take off. So right now it is 9.23 where I'm at. I've already, I posted my gratitude journal maybe about an hour ago. And that's because I already, and I, I posted like, I posted about, um, I put three things, three gratitude stories on there. But just doing that, doing that stuff, the, the repetition, the routine of doing that really helps out with my cognitive issues. You were asking about some of my morning stuff. You talked about working out and how you like going to the gym. Yeah. I was not a big gym goer before multiple sclerosis. I would go up once in a while, you know, beginning of the year, trying to lose weight. Yeah. Now, I don't go to the gym because I can't, I literally can't get out the house or drive or anything anymore. So yeah, it's not going either. to the gym. But what I do is I got my yoga mats. I have bands, stuff like that. And I work out here at home. So I do my yoga. I do yeah. yoga every single day. And I might get the bands out once or twice a week. I need to do my bands a whole lot more. My wife is doing yoga and doing all types of Pilates and stuff like that. That motivates me. And that's something that goes in the gratitude journal. Whenever she does her Pilates, she does her yoga. That motivates me to say, okay, all right, she's doing that stuff. I got to do my stuff too now. I can't quit. I got, in my head, I'm trying to beat her. I'm trying to race her. She gets frustrated uh, at me because I even do, I do stuff like that whenever she's, whenever we're brushing our teeth. If I'm brushing my teeth and she comes and starts brushing her teeth in my head, I got to brush my teeth longer than her. And all the little stuff makes me stand, makes me try to stand up more, which is kind of like a yoga pose because you got to get up. You got to move. You got to be active with this multiple sclerosis. We all know that every doctor tells you to be as active as possible. So just standing up a little bit longer, trying to brush your teeth because I want to brush my teeth longer than her. No matter how childish she calls me, she laughs at me. That's one of the things that's that's one of the ways to get your mindset over the bullshit to stop wow. thinking about how much your feet hurt, how bad the nerve pain is in the legs. Yeah. I'm just trying to beat her brushing my teeth. Oh, and all, this part of my, all this part of my morning, all this part of my morning routine. routine yeah, absolutely. I do, my, yeah. Um, I do manifestations, too. Have you heard of manifestations? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, your subconscious where you work with your subconscious. Yeah, something like it's um it was started up by it was started up by a psychiatrist um Tesla. Yeah. It's called sure. Tesla's law of manifestation where you write when you first wake up, you write down your goal three times. In the middle of the day you write it down six times and right before bed you write it down nine times. It's called Tesla's law of three of manifestation. Six three six nine. And they say that if you do that 21 days in a row, you're going to manifest whatever it is go you, you, that you've been writing down so much. Wow. I do stuff like that. So in the morning time, I'm trying to admit it, as soon as I wake up to write down my goal three times. Have I ever done it 21 days in a row? I did the 21 days in a row once a couple of years ago. And I but it was the only time I've ever had a dream that I was cured of multiple sclerosis. So Wow. Will that manifest when it come true? I have no idea. But I remember that so vividly that I did it 21 days in a row finally, and I had the best dream, or I had one of the best dreams of my life. Good for you, man. It's, 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 so you, you, you're not under any medication right now? I am. Um, I take I took my, I took Ocrevus in October. Yeah. And that was my third dose of the year. So I'm supposed to take Ocrevus again in March, if I have insurance. Oh, wow. Then, yes. Every day, the only medication I take every day is um, oxybutynin. Because I go to, if I don't take oxybutynin for, for the for the restroom, my multiple sclerosis, it's in my it's in my bowels, it's in my bladder. So I would go to the bathroom. I would have, yeah. to, I would have to go pee twice an hour. And since I'm in the wheelchair, all that trying to transition, all that trying to get to the toilet, oh, that's, that's, that's a lot. So I take oxybutynin every day. And that cuts me back to going to the bathroom about every every two hours, two or three hours. I go to the bathroom, well, which is it. a lot better than going twice an hour. A whole lot better. Uh, that's all I think. Yeah, that's all I think. I mean, uh, us being guys, we're lucky we get to have a bottle. So if you're able to do it, um, you were mentioning Oclavis. You know, I, I decided recently not to go continue with Oclavis, um, even due 
you know, even though there's some uh, hesitation on my end not to take it, uh, yep. uh, or but I, I've been on it for six years, and you know, I don't find it really helped me slowing down the the generation. Me either. We we agree on that. So I took my three doses, and it cost so much. I took my three doses last year, and by, by the third dose, I did not seriously feel like it was helping anything. The both, I don't feel like anything has really helped. The Botox, the painkillers, the muscle relaxers, I don't feel like yeah. any of it actually helps. Really? Okay. Because they've uh, I've had suggestions to get Botox in my legs. It might help me bend my legs easier. Um um, you know, unfortunately, I, I got up really early today, but I made it on time, man. Uh, I, you know, that, that's all about. But usually, <laughs> thank the morning, you very much. Huh? You're welcome. I said thank uh, you. Yeah, yeah you, no problem. Uh, it's a nice snowy day here, anyhow. So we're basically caved in for the rest of the weekend. Um, I have friends who live in Calgary. I'm sorry if I'm just sub jumping from subject to another, but he told me that it's minus 40, which is. I don't know what's the temperature in the States. Wow. Minus 40 degrees. I don't know what's the Fahrenheit on that one. 70? I don't know. Uh, I don't Dude, know either. Minus, minus, I don't know, man. It's cold, man. It doesn't, I, matter I, I, what, it doesn't matter what temperature. It doesn't matter if you're using Celsius or Fahrenheit. Minus 40 is cold. Minus 40 is cold, man. He tells me that he puts water in the glass. If he's outside, he puts water in the glass. And if he throws it up in the air, it becomes ice by the time it hits the ground. Wow. Wow. That's cold, right? Whoa, Whoa that's you're, cold. As you're cold. in Texas, so you know you, you don't know. You know. Respect your wheelchair. Quit apologizing for your disabilities. Do some yoga. Jump on cannabis. Damn. Learn your love language. What you gonna start do a this? gratitude journal? In 2024, take charge of your life. Be better. No, I mean take some. Like I mean, take, we had the the ice storm hit Houston a couple of years. I think it was in 2020. Right, right. The ice storm hit us. Yeah. And we're not used to cold like that. But when it's 60 degrees, yeah. we'll put on sweaters and everything. I mean, oh, we're, wow. we're not used to cold like that. Yeah. And it was so cold during, the, during, during, during that, during that um, the ice storm, my in-laws' cat froze inside the house. Their what froze? Their they're cat froze. Froze wow. inside of the house. Yeah, That's froze to death inside the house. That. It's that cold. Yep. Yeah. We had no power or anything. Wow, that's cold. Wow, yeah. that was a surprise, eh? I don't know if it's global warming or it's just... I mean, it's. A, it, listen, the planet we're on, man, is a living being, you know, and, True. and she feels stuff, you know, and she could, she'd be angry, I think. She'd be angry at us, you know, so who knows? Maybe it's her way to wake us up or get rid of us you know yep um you know um you know think about you know but going back to Okavis and everything else i decided not to go with it uh it's a decision that took me a while to get to um i just don't find the benefits in it and at the same time you know i i got hospitalized last month i got covid and i i believe it a lot of it to do is because our immune system suppressed when we're on all of this. And that yep, doesn't help fight like this disease. Because, so, you know, this COVID thing is not going to leave us, man. And, and every time I catch COVID, I'm going to end up in the hospital, man. I mean, it's a hard pill to swallow, you know. But that's what I'm facing now, you know. And it's like, wow, man. You know, I used to be out and going to parties and mingling and salsa dancing. I used to be a good salsa dancer. And, you know, now, shit, I came and go out. And meet people now? Is that is that what's going on? Is is that what I have to be afraid of? You know, like because there as you know, there are a lot of people with MS who are just in their homes all day, you know, and you yep. and some are better than others. Listen, I I had a chance to have a family. I mean, I I'm not a good father, I'm not a good husband. And that's the way it has to be, you know, and I'm facing that reality and I need to face that every day. Um, uh, but I'm okay with it, you know. I'm you know, I, I, I'm learning to let go. Uh what I do, I meditate. I meditate every day. I try to in the, at night, anyhow. I'm breathing, breathing. Ooh, the yes. breath. Thing. I, I'm I'm taking this thing called alchemy of breath. It's this dude from England. He looks like Jesus Christ in his sixties. So I think that's part of the allure why we're so attracted to his breathing techniques. 
So, but you know, breathing is so important. Like there's so different kinds of breath, like the nasal breathing where you're going from one nasal to the other, um, yep. tapping, but that, besides that, going back to breathing, um, long breaths, short breaths, holding your breaths and do that for like yep. half an hour with a group, uh, in a group setting, uh, it is powerful when you, when you do it in a group, man, you do feel the energy of the group, you know, uh, meditation or whatever you're talking about, you know, in a group, you really feel it. I mean, uh, I, I have, I've had girlfriends in the past that have gone to see Joe Dispenza. I don't know if you heard of Joe Dispenza. Yes. Yes. Yeah, she actually had the money to go see him. So, you know, but, but, and she wrote a book on MS, how it was a gift, a healing gift for her. And, she she's a uh, you know she's living proof of it you know she's still walking and being independent and all that stuff uh but anyways joe dispensa it's like a three four day summit where it's a lot of its meditation uh energy healing but it, it, you know and you, you really do feel it when you're in a group you you do feel their energy and uh i don't i don't know if you if you know that or you've done that in the past where you felt the energy of the group um, I have, I've done the, I, I so I do med, I meditate regularly. I used to meditate every single day for five to ten minutes. I don't do it every single day. I do it like more like once every other week now. I do the yoga every day, but I, hardly, I do breathing exercises every few days. But yeah, I've slowed down my meditation. I, hold, I need, I keep saying, I keep telling myself that I'm going to get back into it. But when it comes to the to the group healing, the energy type healing, I've had. We had somebody from the closest thing I can come to that is that we're in Texas. We had somebody from not Dominican Republic, Belize, who did the energy healing through a Zoom conference with my wife and I. She asked us yeah. all these questions and did all these different little signs. And she said she was doing some type of healing energy. Now, when I got done, I, I felt great inside. I felt great inside the head. I felt great inside my heart. I felt like I could I felt like colors were brighter. Sounds sounds were louder. I, I, but actual pain, actual moving, no, that stuff changed at all. But no, yeah, no. on the inside. <laughs> that's important, right? I mean, and that's, I mean, that's no, and knowings have to battle. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, it's not going to eliminate everything, but it's going to maybe uh, soften, soften things. You know, and and uh, uh, I mean, you know, it's and you're getting healing from your family as well. I mean. It shows, you know, you, I'm sure you heard stories of people with MS, how some of their loved ones left them, but and some of them are still in a relationship and yep. some of them are alone. And, you know, there's all kinds of stories, you know, but I think having support is so important. Yep. You know, if you can't get it from your immediate family, you get it from your friends, you get it from your group, right? You know, I mean, you can't limit in the past, you know, all this and that. So, you know, if you're regretting something, maybe there's something that you got to fix now. And if it can't be a family, then find a support group, you know, find a community. You know, love, love is, uh, love is, uh, not just between, you know, love is so many, love can mean so many things. Yep. Right. You know, as you know, um, uh, do the Valentine's is coming up next month for you, bro. Uh, are you going to take your loved one somewhere? I plan. I want to do something with the wife. I've um. Yeah. I tell you this with it with, with love. Yeah. I learned my. I did. I read the five the five love languages book. I believe it was in two thousand twenty to two thousand twenty one. Yeah. Maybe 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 even been earlier. But I know this. I was struggling with a lot of my relationships, from marriage to the kids and everything. Mm. And once I read that five love languages and understood and began to actually apply it. Understanding that, okay, my wife is not gifts. My wife is acts of service. My oldest child is not acts of service. My oldest child sees love as me actually talking to her, listening to her stories. Mm. My third kid, her love language is gifts. Once I began to understand stuff like that and apply that to my family and friends, oh, wow, everything got so much better. I wow. stopped getting my feelings hurt so much because I understood I'm expecting you to do this or that whenever I've done something for you. I'm yeah. in this wheelchair. I'm busting my ass. I'm sacrificing for you. I want you to do something back for me. And I didn't understand that 
the stuff they were doing was their love language. It was like, I mean, like if they're doing active service, if they're buying me something, even if they're sitting on the couch watching a movie with me or watching a football game with me, I understand now that's quality time. My love language is quality time. That should be, that's that's what I'm looking for. That's exactly it. And once I understood that in the different ways that, that you can do that and use that, oh right. man, I got so much better with all this. So you are right about that love. That love can be so many things. It can, it can mean so much. And it's, it is instrumental to how we deal with multiple sclerosis or any type yeah. of being in the wheelchair. It is because the feelings of loneliness, the feelings of abandonment, mm-hmm. oh, shit, that's, that's real stuff. That is real yeah. stuff that can really man. Oh, yeah, right man. outside your head. You know, you got to get outside your head. You know, um, I mean, you know, I was in the hospital bed for two days. I wasn't able to move. You know, um, it gave, basically, COVID gives, alleviates my symptoms with MS so much so that I can't move. And that's a scary thought, you know. And and, he, and so I was just thinking about all kinds of things when though for those few days. And, you know, I, I was most of the time in the meditative bliss, you know, just thinking about, you know, me going back, being back home or me doing certain things, uh, looking forward to those things, tasting it. I mean, that hospital food, you guys, you can imagine, was nasty. I don't even know how yeah. they feed people with those things. Like, you actually going to feed me with that? Is that food? Uh, so I, I didn't barely ate. So I was just thinking about, oh, you know, it's nice chicken or nice meat, a nice uh, bowl of, uh, my parents are Italian, so it's not just past the week. We eat kinds of fishes and meats and I'm just, you know, my mind was on that. You know, I, I'm, like I said, mm-hmm. I'm a food connoisseur now. If like you know, I mean, more than ever, but I gotta be careful because that stomach's gonna blow up. Um, yep. You know, we gotta be careful with that. So, yep. uh, but yeah, we said just going back to that, and and you know, and, and allow me to get those, get those, go through those few days, you know, of being an emergency ward, and yeah, I just, you know, I I don't want to be in that situation again, and but I'm grateful that where I'm at, you know, I don't have to be where I'm at right now. Um, I'm, you know, my, my family has taken me in and, and, uh, it's not perfect, you know, and I, like you said before, you know, you have to kind of know what their love is and what signals are giving you and yep. it, it, use it for the better, you know, but if it's not going to be there, then don't expect it to be there when it's not, you know, yep. uh, you can't force things. You, you can't, you can't force people to do things for you, man. I agree with you. It's, it's 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 uncomfortable, you know, for you for them and and then and then the people are gonna they're not gonna give it all they're all either you know and when, when something's half assed and it's so easy to forget things you know like details you know like it's little things steps that you need to do in order to get where you want to go or what you the job the tasking hand and uh, it's it's nice to have people around you to kind of remind you of those things you know. Yes, you know, because it's affecting our mind. I mean, I got lesion when I got I got diagnosed the same year you got diagnosed, man. I was I was living in uh, west western part of Canada. I lived in the states too, but where I was at that time, I was living in western Canada. I was living in the in the Rockies. I was skiing, uh, but I I started having pain in my legs, and it took me a while to finally get diagnosed because I went I got admitted to the emergency ward in Calgary Hospital and. I got diagnosed there, and they found more too many lesions to count from the get-go. So yep. by looking at that, they knew that, oh, I've had MS for a while. You know, even though I got diagnosed that year, they said, oh, you probably had MS for at least 10 years before that. But the year I was going with the, you know, not seeing, right? You know, like we had symptoms, but we, we I, I'm speaking for myself. I was just too hard-headed or thinking this is how uh, how life is. You gotta suffer a little bit, go through it, go through it, and never thinking that it was that you mess. Thought you were getting older. You just thought you just, yeah, just right. thought you were getting older. Thought maybe you had been working out, right? Something was going. The gym a little bit more, yeah. right? You know what I mean? I, but the 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 the, the, the symptoms were there, but that's okay. You know, we didn't think that it was MS, and they don't think that you have MS until they narrow down the possibilities. You know, I designed T-shirts and products. For wheelchair users that are not afraid to be called wheelchair users. 
That's why I love the Unfuck Withable t-shirt. When I roll in in my wheelchair wearing Unfuck Withable, everybody knows what's yes. up. But uh, Wait, what yeah. what stage of MS are you at right now? Well, I, I mean, they talk, you know, they, they obviously they labeled MS the f- four different groups, I think, or I don't know, at least two, and uh, uh, three or four. It was that a three or four. It's relapse. I know of relapse and remitting, yeah. then secondary, and I'm at the primary progressive. I'm, I'm Same here, primary. brother. Same here, man. I'm, I'm yeah, primary okay. progressive. Yeah, I pretty they, much they, assumed that once you said that you were in a wheelchair, child, like, oh, okay, so he's yeah. he's by the same boat as me. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's happening around the same time. And uh, what is and your they, what is your worst symptom? So if somebody was somebody were to ask you, what is the worst? What is the hardest thing about being in the wheelchair or dealing with MS? Which one would you say is the hardest symptom? The worst symptom? Well, I mean, listen, man. I mean, sitting down now obviously causes other problems, right? Yeah. All right, so I mean, I got sores. right sores, Ooh, the sores and the scratching. I, like I just found out recently that the reason why I was scratching is because it's dry. You know, you have to make, you be careful with your skin. My skin's more sensitive now than ever. It's right, and the stuff sitting down all the time. I mean, I'm I'm sta- I'm standing up when I can, um, but yeah, sitting down is different from you know using a walker. So do you ever lay on your stomach? You're right. You do. Do I have to lie in my stomach? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have to a lie down. Um, my physical therapist used to always tell me, Kendrick, you've got to get out the wheelchair and lay on your stomach. Laying on your stomach will help out with your lower back problems, and it'll, of course, it'll get you. It'll you won't be sitting on your bed so it's in pressure, so it'll give you some relief there. So I'm just curious. Do you lay on your stomach? I do. Yeah, but I never thought that it was good for my back, but I did feel better. Lying on my stomach, but I never thought about. Oh, that's the reason why. But now you're giving me the reason why, so it's nice to, that I hear that. Yeah, um, my physical therapist said it had to do with the. He said if you lay on your stomach, then the fluids in your back are going to the different, you know, the different disc and stuff like that. The fluids in your back are going to where this basically they're going to where they're supposed to be. So anytime we're in the wheelchair. All those fluids are resting right in our lower back. The right around those areas are it ends up getting dry, and that's why that's where the pain, extra pain, comes from. And once we, he said, one of the simple things that we can do is yeah. just try to lay on your stomach at least five minutes every single day, and then let wow. the fluids go to where they're supposed to in your in your in your different surf in your C threes and your all the L sevens and all the other type of stuff, and it, it'll help out with that. And it does help out. It helps out a whole lot. I don't lay on my stomach a lot because I have to lay, if I lay on my stomach, I have so many spasms and I'm so spastic that I can't lay flat. Like I can't get on the floor and lay on my stomach. I have to lay on my stomach where my feet actually hang off the bed. The way I have less spasms. And Are, are, are you in a hospital bed or a regular bed? I'm in a regular bed. So whenever I get uh, transitioning from the wheelchair to the bed means I go from the wheelchair to the floor. I I slug the one or two steps, the one or two feet to the bed. Then I'm trying to do the exercise. I'm trying to like use my triceps and biceps and push myself up yeah. and get on the edge of the bed. Then I slowly back up into it. Sometimes the kids would get my feet and help swing me, my feet onto the bed. I can't sit on any of my couches anymore. I have to get help every time I sit on the couches now because I can't. The couches are higher than the wheelchair and they're transitioning from the wheelchair to a higher spot. Oh shit, that's hard. <laughs> that's hard yeah. as hell. I oh, can imagine. Man, that's that. hard as hell. Um, I mean, you know, I mean, I've been blessed that uh well, the the city gave me a hospital bed. They have this program where they give you a hospital bed. Mm-hmm. So I switched to that recently. I feel that that helps me a lot, you know, le- alleviates your bed when you want it to. Um so you know, the headrest, you raise your you know, when you left your legs. Sorry, Kendrick. I'm uh, you still there? Yeah. yeah I'm just sorry, letting you know I'm at down twenty percent, but I'm still here with you, brother. Uh but you know, they have the hospital bed and um they also give me electrical wheelchair. Alleviating just levi- alleviating alleviating your legs or just raising your legs up uh, uh lessens the uh, stress. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm I'm sure you find that, that 
you do that sometimes where you lift your legs and leave yep, the I try to put them up 30 minutes a day. Whenever I had, whenever I had, um, I used to have home health. I used to have home health nurses used to come through three or three and four times a week. Oh, nice. So they would always get on to me and tell me, hey, you got to put your feet up. I know you think it's not helping, but if you don't put your feet up, you next year, your feet are going to be so much more swollen. They're going to be so much more painful. So I do Circulate. a lot better job of putting, and it does, it takes about, it takes about five or six days. If I put my feet up, for five or six days in a row, 30 minutes, then I can actually see and people ask, well, hey, Kendrick, your feet are not as swollen. You must be putting your feet up. My kids even say that. Daddy, your feet look so much better today. It's because I've been putting my feet up. But if I miss one day out of the five or six in a row, wow. you feel one it. day, then I got to always start over. It, 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 it takes a while for that wellness stuff to kick in. Wow. Well, it's good that you're you know paying attention to that. You know, those are the details that sometimes, you know, if you're living on your own or you're, you're, you're you know, uh, you're not in a big family circle, you, you're not reminded of it, you know, and, and, you know, because you're important, man, you know, even though sometimes people don't seem to think so, especially if they live it by themselves or their situation is different, but you are important, you know, and you, you got to put your priorities in, in order, you know, and then yep. by, you know, getting those legs up, um, you know, I got the electrical wheelchair. That's great too. It helps me get around, and uh, it's good that I'm grateful for the services that the city gives. You know, for that, um, I love to get more support at home. I would love to get a physio. Man, I would be great if I had a physio every day. Wouldn't that be amazing? You know, have your own physio. Good. Wouldn't that be the best? Hey, just if 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 I if, the, if I was to get one wish, obviously the first wish would be that I find the cure for MS. But if not, then gaining a physio every day, that would be my second wish to come to my place every day. I would just have my own personal physio. Is the hey. physio a physical therapist? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had a physical therapist for about seven or eight months. Would come through twice a week. Oh, he was awesome. Wasn't it? And I still use a bunch of the stuff. He used to work with me and help me on and teach me and show me. Yeah, he was awesome. That, that physical therapist was way better than any of the pills, any of the um, any of the yeah. pills, any of the shots, any of the injections, any of the infusions, any of the steroids. That physical therapist was yeah. better than all of that stuff. Because, it, because it's like healing, you know, like uh, energy healing or, you know, that it's healing, too, you know, because his energy is coming from his to yours. And if, yep. it, was, and if it was good. Well, then all the better for you. You know, I don't think there's a mean physical therapist. I think they're all pretty they're all good in the mind because you're working with clients. You can't, nobody wants to work with a a hole. If they yeah. don't have, to. <laughs> you are absolutely correct on that one. Yeah. Nobody, nobody, wants, nobody wants to work with the a hole. Well, listen yeah. here, Frank, we, we've been, we bought, I've got to know before I get ready, I got to get ready to start letting you go before I go anywhere though, Frank, is there any book or Netflix or anything you're watching that takes your mind? away from all the bullshit with multiple sclerosis, any book you're reading, anything you're watching, it just takes your mind away from all of this. Well, I'm, I'm a fan of, I'm a history buff. Okay. So I love reading books on history. Like, uh, mm -hmm. like you know, I, I've had the blessed, blessings to kind of go to, like I used to go to California a lot. And uh, I used to go there when I was a kid. And there's this book that I read about historical, like the town I used to go to, how it started. History. I, I just love history. Anything, any book on history, I just love. And it distracts me from where I'm at now, you know, because I know where man has achieved, where, where, where man can go, the possibilities of man. And we are men. So we were there, you know, and that's yep. my mindset, you know. Yep. Wow, this is real shit. Especially if you're wheelchair bound or severely disabled. You right bro, moving doesn't get easier, you just become stronger. Being alone doesn't get easier, you just learn shit to do. Maybe shows to watch. The pain level doesn't get easier, you manage it. Grit your teeth and keep going. The key is you, you get better at rocking and rolling. Swinging and banging on the ones and twos. You learn mindset over bullshit. Yep. Yeah. I used to be a history teacher before multiple sclerosis. Oh, I was a history you. teacher. 
So I'm with nice. you, and then I love history. Oh, that was my subject, man. That was good for you, man. What I taught for almost twenty years. So I'm with you on that one. Oh wow, good for you. I I've had the privilege. I used to go to school in the states. I went to I went to college there, a university, and we took a class on civil history. And that guy, man, was amazing. I mean, he was just a big history buff on the civil history all the way up to modern times, and you you know, the, yeah. So. I don't know what cat what 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 did you teach? You generalized in history. I Is taught, that what you I, taught um, I taught middle school history, so I taught American history yeah. throughout the from American history from colonization to the Civil War. Look at I that. Civil War was with the second history class, so that that's what I and I taught that for like sixteen years, and then for the last three or four years of teaching, I taught a class called AVID Advancement via individual determination and in that class i got i took kids that would be first generation college seekers so their parents grant they were the first ones ever to go to college they would enter my class and they would be in ap classes and stuff like that and then 88 percent of those kids went on to some form of education after high school either they went to college or they went to a technical school or they went to right. like an auto mechanic school. They did they did something after high school. So that's like my right. crowning, that's like my crowning achievement of my teaching career was that that 88% of my kids in middle school finished high school and went on to something after high school. I've always bragged to be my chest wow. about that. That's amazing, man. You gave back to kids. Good for you, brother. Good Thank for you, man. I, yeah, I'm sure you got a lot of reward in that. You know, I did. That's the only job I've never that's the teaching is the only job I've never been fired from. Wow, I've done a lot of stuff in my life. I, I, I used to be an ice cream. I used to be an ice cream, an ice cream scooper person. I got fired from that. <laughs> well, I mean, every, I, now I work. I'm out, I'm doing up doing telesales over the phone with insurance, auto insurance, health insurance, life insurance. Right now, I am a over the phone. I am a remote customer service person for a pharmacy help desk, and they've already told me that I'm about to get fired from this from this one too because. I'm severely disabled now, so it's not just the legs. I um like I I don't have all the feeling in my left hand. Mm. I'm 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 now I'm legally blind. I have all type of issues with my, with my MS, and so with the gigs that I have with these um, with these remote jobs, they're always going to be number one. Like we spoke about you got to sit in the wheelchair, and that yeah. hurts. Oh shit, that hurts being in that wheelchair like that for hours a day. And then because yep. you're on the computer, and I'm legally blind. That means I'm a whole lot slower trying to read stuff, say stuff. If you ask me a question, hey, Kendrick, I want to get my prescription from so-and-so. How much does it cost? It takes me a while to look at the screens and and the whole time I'm just talking to you. Well, yep, it is National Ice Cream Day. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm still looking for Oh, I'm still here. I'm going to find it for you. Thank you for your patience. I'm doing, And all of that makes me look bad to the job. Now, the people on the phone like me. They, they they never complain about how long it takes, but shit, yeah. the job the job is the job is like yo 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 your call should be about two minutes long. Yeah, they take all, the average ten minutes. Yeah, you can't scripted, keep doing. Yeah. That. Shit, I don't know yeah. what to do about that, man. I'm, I'm disabled. I can't see. Like I'm trying my best. I can't do shit. Well, we understand, Kendrick, but these are primary responsibilities, and if you can't do these, we're going to have to let you go. And I get that talk all the time. Oh well, I mean, uh, on to the uh, move on to the next. I guess. Yep. You know, it's, it's good that you're able to work. You got to start your own business. You got to do. You got to use your life to create something for yourself. So I'm trying to. I am building myself into being a life coach. I've got my podcast. I've got my gratitude journal. My website. I'm doing stuff <laughs> like that, and I know at some point I'm going to turn those into viable sources of income. I know at some point I will not need to keep trying to hurt myself to work for these for to work for these remote work from home jobs and stuff like that. I'll have my own stuff. And on top of that, working on your own stuff takes your mind away from your disabilities, your limitations. It's another one of the things that takes your mindset over the bush if you actually dive into stuff you really want to do. And I really want to be a speaker on gratitude. I don't want to go, I don't want to fly all around the world and talk about everything. I want to fly all around the world and talk about gratitude, gratitude journaling, mindset. And I want to talk to wheelchair users specifically. So 
And I know as long as I if as long as I stay like that, then everything I do for it is fun, it's entertaining, it takes my mind off of it. Every time I stop trying to do it this way and I start trying to focus on getting clients and just do some type of presentation and just look, you gotta you gotta make some money. Every time I start doing it that way, oh, then I lose it. I, it's not as fun. Being in the wheelchair, talking to people hurts more. But as long as I'm just talking to wheelchair users and talking about gratitude, journaling, and mindset, oh, I, I, I feel like I feel no pain at all. It, and it's what you love. It's what you're interested in that. Yep. And you got it's what you love. If you're doing it for money, then you're not going to get it. You know, and yep. especially where we're at right now, you know, and you got to do, well, do what you love. You're not going to do what it's for the sake of making money. Unfortunately, I have insurance. And I, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I, I have insurance and it's uh, not allowed me to, to work part time. And I'm, I have to be mindful of trying to try to work online because if my insurance catches me, they could cut me off. So yeah. I have that fear and that sucks because then it disables me from trying to persevere and, and go to go yeah. go what you're talking about. Um, I would love to do more presentations. Uh, I'm looking into that as well. Um, either talking to high schools. I speak French as well. So I'm thinking locally, just even if it's one kid that wants to listen to my story, because I've had the chance to live uh, in different countries in this world. Uh, I've worn different hats and I have a story to say. And the story, I just want to get young kids today to get their asses moving. Um, you know, um, they all think that they're robots and they're going to live as long as AI lives, you know, but they're on a limited capacity themselves, you know, and if they don't do what they want to do right now, they're never going to do it, you know, and, yep. and they're, and they're, no, they're nothing special, you know, compared to anybody else. And so if that's the message I want to give to kids is that, is that, you know, you got to live your life now, you know, because tomorrow's not promised. Yep. You are correct. And yeah. once you get diagnosed with something like this, you really yeah. you hear stuff like that all the time as a kid growing up, everything, even as an adult. But when you finally get a, a situation like you're in a wheelchair, or you have these illnesses with no cure, you have the nerve, the stuff that we go through, now you really see it. Now yeah. that clock is up your head. Now all that stuff really makes sense and hits home. So I'm with you on that. Frank, before I let you go, the last thing I'd ask you today, mindset over bullshit is about gratitude, journaling, mindset, will to users, being better people. Is there any story of gratitude you can leave with us? And whenever I say a story of gratitude, it means you can't list off what you're grateful for. So you can't say, I'm grateful I have a house, I'm grateful I have food, I'm grateful I have a shirt. You got to tell us a why story, something like, I'm grateful I'm going outside today because I get to see friends so it'll take my mindset off this or I'm grateful I'm going to be cooking so-and-so that'll take my mindset off of having this wheelchair. What is your, what is your why story today? Um, well, yeah, okay. Well, you know, unfortunately, I, I love cooking, but I haven't cooked for a while, but I would love to. Um, what I'll be grateful for today is that, oh, yeah, uh, we put uh, cat food outside of the house. I'm not, okay. I, of course, I, I'm a cat person. I can't have any cats where I live right now. So uh, <laughs> we put food outside of the house and we get stray cats to eat the food. And so we have different cats that come. Uh, we got tabby cat. We got a black and white cat. Got the black cat. You got the brown cat. We got five, six different cats, you know. So I'm grateful that I'm able to. I know I can't have my own cat anymore because where I'm at. But at least I get to see cats. Uh, outside and uh, I have names for them. I have Kathy. I got uh, John and and uh, I got uh, Mitzi and I call her. The, so I got the cats to come here and I have names for them. And I That's get the one. Cool I like that. Oh, it's great. You know, it's nice. To I see like them. that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I always. I mean, I love that pets. I wish I had some animal therapy. It goes a lot. Do you have any animals? Facebook opened up my Christmas 2023 with gratitude stories. All of these pictures are from three years ago. Oh, back then your boy could still move around with a walker. 
I remember my daughter's best friend took the pictures for us. We had a good time on this day. Good job, Facebook. I do. My kids do not like when I call them pets, but other than, uh, other, than, other, than, other than my kids. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You I don't right. have a pet. Yeah. <laughs> I, keep telling, I keep telling my wife and kids that I want to get a pet, but the pet, like, before I got married, I had things like snakes, I had iguanas, yeah. I had alligators as yeah. pets. I had stuff like that. And now that I'm married with kids, my wife and kids are like, you're not getting a snake. You're not getting an alligator. You're not getting a lizard around the house. You can get, like, my daughter has a dog here. But, yeah, I, I don't have any pet. I, I thought about a pet. The last few months, I have been thinking to myself, like, oh, I kind of. I kind of want my own pet. I kind of want a little pet that I can talk to and sit on my sure. lap and stuff like that. But man, I am, um, yeah, I have not, I have not got into a place where the animal, the pet that I would actually want, that the family is like, okay, go for it. No, we're, we're not the same wavelength with that. <laughs> oh well, you never say never. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah never say never. Never yeah. say never, brother. Good talking, man. Thank you for. So uh, thank you for this lovely conversation. I appreciate it. You no know, problem. And, uh, I gotta have you back again. I have sincerely uh, enjoyed this conversation. I got to have you back again. Absolutely. Uh, likewise, uh, I have, like I said, I'm starting this uh, thing with. I have started this podcast with my buddy from England. It's hard to find the, the right schedule, but we try to have podcasts every month. Uh, so we get a nice international crowd. So if we could get you as a guest as well in the Facebook I'm world. Good. I would, yeah. I, would oh, great, I would love it. I would love it. Yeah, I would love it. Yeah, I like the Yeah. Okay, you're on. Okay, great. So that'd be great. Yeah. So uh, we'll definitely keep in touch, man. And uh, yeah, you know, you have. I uh, hopefully you have a good weekend. You get to do the things I sure that you will. want. Yeah. I sure and will. we're snowed in today, so it's a snow day. I'm stuck inside today, man. <laughs> I'm stuck inside anything. every single day. It, I guess oh. that's one of the things that the wheelchair uses though. I, I can't get outside, so like the wind has been blowing. The wind has been blowing really, really bad, really, really strong here lately. And I was telling my wife last night, yesterday, I said, "Man, I keep, I want to. I hear the wind outside so much that I want to go outside and feel the wind." Mess around, yeah. we went, we went out for her birthday dinner last night, and I went out and I felt that cold wind. Man, he about three seconds, and I was ready to go back in the house. I was, oh, wow. <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, oh, I need to be back in the house. What am I doing? This is no longer my world. No, I need to wow. be in the house. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing that. That's wild, man. I mean, like, no I, 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 I mean, I could show you. Like, uh, Let me just flip the image. Can I? Yep. Do One it. sec. Yeah, I could just flip the image. Well, I'm just going to turn. The, do you see the snow? No, because you have the you have the you have the blurred you have the blurred um vision on. Oh, the, I got the blurry program. stuff. Ah, oh, I got the blurry option. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm uh, I'm you know I'm tech savvy, but I just uh, I don't know where to get. I don't even know where to shut that off. Oh well. You know, I wish I could show you that, man. It's but hey, you see the white, it's all white, so you, you see white. Have right more now. opportunities because I'm going to have you back. I want you to be a regular on this podcast. Oh, I sincerely enjoyed this conversation. It has been a lot about multiple sclerosis, and we've talked about different things. And I know we're going to help some people with these with these conversations. So, Absolutely. yeah, I want you to be a regular on here. Oh, that'd be great, man! Like, oh, that'd be awesome, man! I love that. Love to, I love to share my story, and hopefully, uh, like I said, some people could like this and, and maybe get them to realize that you know life is bigger than they think and uh, maybe they, they could do more than they they can right now and, and the, you know people are limited in their minds and that's the one tool that we have is our mind yep right? that's why that's why my phrase is my phrase is if you can't get better you can always be better you can be better in the mind. You can be better in the heart. You can be better in the soul. Getting better is about the physical part. Being better is about being better inside, being a better parent, being a better spouse, being a better son, a better cousin, a better supervisor. You can always be better. That doesn't, it, you don't yeah. need a doctor to tell you that you can be better. Being better is on you to actually put in the work and do things to be better. 100%, man. And, uh, 
you know, and also choosing where you want to put your energy, you know, because yep. you don't want to put energy on people that are going to uh, not, they're, n- they're not necessarily vampires, but you know, they, 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 they suck your energy out and you don't yep. want to be in that, you don't want to be caught in that. I know what you speak of. I know it. I like face, certain faces popped in my head. As soon as you said vampire, certain faces, I like, I had a roller that's going to me. I'm like, yep, yeah. vampire, vampire, <laughs> vampire. I did. Oh, yeah. Well, Frank, oh, yeah. again, I, a thousand thank yous for rocking with me on Mindset of a Bullshit. I'm going to have yes. you back. Yep. Please keep staying on the podcast, rocking with us, leaving those comments. Because I'm telling you, we can help a lot of people, Frank. I sincerely Absolutely. appreciate this. And I thank hope you, you enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Thank you very much, man. Salute to you, man. Have a no great problem. week. All right, yep. brother. Take care, man. Keep on Take knocking care. them Keep on knocking Take them down. All right, man. Take care, man. Swinging and banging on the ones and the twos. I'm Kendrick Avant, your professor of gratitude. And if you didn't know, you need to know that KendrickAvant.com is my website where you can read over 1,200 consecutive days of gratitude journaling. Easy gratitudes, cheesy gratitudes, the difference between being grateful and showing gratitude. I got inspirational talks and videos for those of us in wheelchairs like myself. Check out KendrickAvad.com, read through the gratitude journals, read through the wellness tips. Enjoy your day. Wheelchair user, I salute you.